Hello and a warm welcome to each one of you. I'm Abhijit Ahashkar, Assistant Editor Technology at Mint, and we are on a virtual platform today with an esteemed group of thought leaders for a discussion on div driving digital transformation and experiences in the COVID-19 scenario. This webinar is powered by Live Mint and Zendesk. The COVID-19 pandemic has challenged businesses to think innovatively and come up with new models to cater to changing customer preferences. It has transformed the way businesses and customers interact. Most teams responding to customers have moved to work remotely. With wait times on the rise, customers are turning to channels beyond traditional phone and email in the hope of finding quick answers. Digital-led experiences will grow in popularity over the next few months. Companies that act quickly and innovate in the delivery model to help customers navigate the pandemic safely and effectively will have an advantage. Now is also the time for customer experience leaders to position themselves at the forefront of the longer term shifts in the consumer behavior that results from this crisis. Today, we are here to discuss and offer insights on digital transformation and CX trends over the last few months. Without further ado, then let's get started with today's session. We have with us today, Katie Prasad, MD and RVP, India and Sark, Zendesk, Pulkit Jain, co-founder and product head Vedantu, Gajendra Jangit, co-founder and CMO, Cast24, Shrikant Iyer, co-founder and CEO, Home Lane. So let's get started. Hello, Shrikant. We would start off by understanding from you, how has COVID-19 transformed your business? Um, so, so we serve customers who uh, do interior decoration uh, through us. So they, they give us their home and uh, we decorate it for them. So it's a largest ticket size kind of uh, a sale. Uh, an average customer spends about uh, $10,000, about 7 lakhs or so per house uh, with us. Uh, this is for doing up the whole home interior. So obviously the need for the customer uh, to touch and feel before they sign up an order is very high because it's like, uh, you know, if I have to take a parallel, it's like buying a car. You typically do a test drive at least before you buy a car. I mean, uh, Right, so something like that. But obviously, uh, COVID has completely turned it upside down. I'll give you a single piece of statistic. Uh, we have had this platform called Spacecraft, uh, which we use, where customers can actually do up their interiors uh, using this platform, and a designer on the other side will be helping you with doing up your home virtually. We've had this platform for three years, pre-COVID, and we give we give the option for meeting virtually to 100% of customers. All of them, we tell them, you know, meet us either physically or meet us virtually. Pre-COVID, 6% of customers used to meet us virtually. Uh, in June, 86% uh, of customers met us virtually. Uh, so it's completely kind of flipped. Uh, and, uh, but that's, that's, that's really... Uh, forced change in customer behavior, uh, but that's what it is. Thankfully, because we had this platform, this is we built. We had built this on our own some time back. But what it meant for us was it meant that we needed to have a lot of trained resources at the other end because there was only a six percent demand before. Uh, we had a lot of designers who were very good at doing a face-to-face -face demo and designing but not that good at doing a virtual uh, design. Obviously, constant communication using the CRM has also helped, helped a lot. I would say that uh, that's one very, very large aspect, the largest aspect from where customers have uh, uh, changed behavior. Uh, there are many more, but this is probably the largest. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite fascinating how customers were so reluctant, like right before COVID, to, to go online and check out things virtually. And also keen and, you know, I mean, uh, embracing it so openly. Gajendra, I, uh, my next question is to you. In what way has customer expectations changed post-COVID? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, so for Cars24, like we, we have, uh, you know, changed the way India, ha you know, buy and sell used car. Mm -hmm. Overall, COVID impact on the auto industry has been heavy. Like given the entire industry was primarily retail oriented, uh, the, the, I think everyone has got a big jerk uh, due to the COVID uh, lockdown and all. Um, however, I think a lot of customer uh, demand has come up post lockdown, primarily because now I think customers uh, are looking for a need to go and travel in their own uh, private vehicle, right? Uh, they they are or they are trying their best to avoid any kind of public transportation or you know maybe you know any taxis or so. So now there is an increased surge of customers who are looking to buy uh, private cars, 
and i think over there the i think the fundamental change which has happened and which i think all the industry has to adapt to is that given the industry was primarily retail oriented now mm. if you want to survive if you want to really recover from this jolt you have to really find innovative ways to interact with the customer find out where your customers are and be their way they actually want you to be to give an example right uh, like prior to covid we were also trying to serve customer at their doorstep uh, and you know buy and sell car um, and that was just less than you know 5% of our business but now after lockdown is over and when we kind of also started you know doorstep services at a customer who want to sell their car uh now my or 95% of the business is coming by doing you know home inspection and buying cars at the customer's doorstep right so business has completely flipped how it was before uh covid and now uh, after lockdown is over everyone is expecting then that brand will come to their doorstep and do whatever in their capacity to able to you know get what they want so that's a big shift has happened, i would say 3 4 months um and it's a matter of survival now if you don't adapt to the new new changing customer needs then you won't be able to survive yeah i remember like uh, a few days ago we did these reports uh, where customers you know uh, how people are now moving to buying their own cars because they're yeah. scared of traveling in public exactly. in transport exactly. so pulkit how has the period been for you has it been tough to keep up with the demands of consumer especially considering the industry you're operating in yeah very uh, interesting times and learnings for us so i remember the times in 2014 15 when we came up with this concept of live online learning and it was very difficult for the entire country and for for the students and parents to trust something like this mm-hmm. and uh, we were the only company doing it till mid to late last year mm-hmm. but suddenly uh, the, the situation has changed everybody today understands that you know the learning can happen online and in the process uh, we are also evolving in multiple flows for example as you know both shrikant and gajendra talked about the touch points that we had were we used to go and touch you know the families at their homes uh, to explain them that you know learning can happen like this but now uh, we are forced to you know adopt our platform and product so that the that that you know the, they can understand on the product itself what vedantu has to offer how learning can happen online so there is a massive product shift which is coming up uh, also the teams which were on foot we had to overnight adjust and you know uh, give our platform luckily we had this live learning platform which all of our uh, the counselors use today to uh, sort of demo it uh, explain it to the parents which has really worked very well for us so just to summarize what i uh, what i was saying was that you know uh, this covid times have actually forced us to look at all of our systems processes and products to ensure that we can provide quality because we are we finally uh, we provide education we are we are, we provide a service and service is always human driven but at the scale at which we are operating now and the skill has suddenly come in right so uh, it has forced us to think everything that we do in a different way uh, for the scale but with predictability in mind for example the way our counselors touch the potential families uh, from doing it uh, home to home to on call before now everything is being done virtually uh, through the product the product needs to uh, had to evolve to explain parents and students about what all vedantu has to offer uh, suddenly last month for example almost a million students took at least a live class on vedantu so you know that completely challenged us in multiple senses from as i said the way we provide service the way we provide the learning journeys to the scale uh, at which that the technology platform could operate so yeah so internally that's why we call it project evolve so as a service provider in the real what are the latest demands generated by your customers is there a fundamental difference to how they are dealing with the digital experience and specifically the technology aspect of coming to your question abhijit i think um, it's so relevant and we felt that you know when covid has um, impacted the world and we have recognized that um this this is going to be here for some time and we've seen different trends are having we what we have done as a company we we are a cx leader a uh, customer experience leader in the software uh, segment so we've done a bit of benchmark study across industries across customers and we have done benchmarking for about with about 23000 customers across the globe and and really trying to understand because we've seen some patterns in india is it same patterns that we seeing it in elsewhere is it a common problem that we are saying to say the the best way to get a view is actually with with benchmarking report i i think uh, the panelists already talked about it i think um, you know where what we understood from this benchmark report number one the customers have you know lot more built lot more patience to wait 
um, to be served. So if either either you're reaching to the customers in whatever preferred channels, I think in the opening remarks you talked about, there are traditional channels that most of the businesses used to use to engage. Now, as a channel mechanism that Srikant talked about, a virtual, a beautiful piece of technology was available, but customers will feel uh, feel more comfortable to touch you know, and feel and probably want to be in person doing interaction. And same as Gajendra and Pulkit talked about it. And, and if you look at in CX market, we, we looked at you know, telephone calling or you know, phones were predominant uses. Now, when COVID impacted, when all the people went into lockdown um, and, and people cannot move these contact center solutions back home, uh, they carried their laptops, desktops, whatever, but not the telephone lines. Um, so people embraced into different technologies. And the beauty is not about business embracing technology. Customers understanding that, you know what, this has impacted me as an individual. It has impacted the business that I deal with. So they're waiting longer in the queue. Uh, either it could be chat or it could be a telephone line if that uh, company still provides those channels to interact. But out of all of these, you know, there is something that all the customers have turned out, is, which is actually WhatsApp. In India, we have seen more and more customers and businesses especially you know, are saying, if hey, we want to provide the support to our customers on WhatsApp, can you help us? Oh, absolutely. And in fact, WhatsApp has been there in the system from last two and a half years. We've been providing WhatsApp as a channel of communication to customers. Um, and, and prominent uses was if we will broadcast a message, let's say you make a purchase, we will send you uh, thank you for purchase Abhijit over a WhatsApp. Now, when the customer started tilting towards WhatsApp as a channel, because that's where they talk to the family and friends, um, you know, people taking orders on WhatsApp. Now, let me give you an example of uh, the, you know, the city that I hail from, Bangalore. The Karnataka government uh, has created a WhatsApp phone number, and which is a business account for all the citizens to order uh, essential services. You can, you can place an order for grocery um, and government uh, will help uh, get those orders delivered during the lockdown. Now, this is the element of technology. Now, those, some of us who used to believe that we can't live without a telephone as a customer support channel, now we have looked at new channels being, being arrived and being adopted, and beautifully so. Now, that has given uh, ability of scale like Pulkit talked about it. Now, imagine a telephone line which can take one, one person or one agent can talk to one customer at a time. A WhatsApp or, or, a, or a live chat channel or a chatbot technologies will allow fewer number of employees of businesses to talk to a bigger number of customers because they could do one is too many. Uh, those companies who have embraced multi-channel, omni-channel strategy, they have a fallback channels. Uh, they've listened to the customers or uh, continues to thrive. Um, and, and those who have been on some of the traditional uh, outlook saying that, okay, we, we think we want to serve our customers on telephone got disrupted bigly. But I think, um, I think everybody would agree that COVID has actually really created a transformation journey for most businesses out there. Uh, we would want to do it. All of us want to do it. But I think COVID really accelerated the time to acceleration because it's just, it becomes survival. That's true. I couldn't agree more with you. I mean, Things, uh, I mean, we just cannot, you know, be defensive anymore. It's, it's about being proactive, you know. Moving on to digital experiences. Customers like to come back to platforms that offer quality digital experiences. Similarly, improving employee experience can make them more productive. How critical are customer and employee experiences in operating an effective digital business in this new reality? Pulkit, I would like you to share your perspective on this first. So, yeah, of course, you rightly said, you know, the way we talk about our customers, for us parents and students, right, we now also have to think about, you know, our team. Because I think the entire operating model, the, the operating structure in which the companies, all of us used to operate, it needs to completely change. For example, I, uh, as a leader, as a team member, I was very comfortable moving around the office talking to people, right, that used to give me... Uh, that connect, that vibe, you know, that was my working style. It has completely changed. I'm struggling. The way we are building the process and the systems and the product for the customers, I think it's high time we, we, we look internally and we create all these new operating structures for the way we operate. For, for, for example, internally, we have decided that we will not go back to the usual way of doing things, the way we were doing pre-COVID as a team. We have, in fact, surrendered a couple of our offices. And we have decided that, you know, we will use it as an opportunity to evolve, uh, to work more effectively, efficiently. Uh, but yeah, that needs a lot of thought uh, from all of us leaders, 
to evolve in that particular direction that's the new reality we have to not just uh, care about our consumers but care about our employees in a way that would make them you know help them be more productive i'd like to uh, ask gajendra you know uh, gajendra what do you think you know uh, is the challenges that you know uh, you know yours is an industry where also you know a lot of uh, decisions are made online so in what way has you know your platform seen you know, handle those challenges yeah actually i would uh, i would like to differ in the opinion over there like like in in car business uh, yeah you're right where when you're saying lot of discovery used to happen online so if i'm planning to buy a car whether it's a new car or used car uh, i will likely to make make up my mind which car i want to buy uh, by just looking at you know online reviews of the car or just you know however at, post you made a decision on you know which cars you want to you know buy the everything hap- all the action used to happen at the dealership right or the person who you want to you buy a car so it's kind of a online plus offline you know bridge model uh but nowadays the thing has completely changed now uh you want you, you are not only want to do a online discovery of the car but at the same time you also expect the either dealership to come to your doorstep expect everything to be done virtually not only paperwork but also you know uh, on you know all the transfer of the trust you know transfer the payment and everything so all of these challenges we we realize this is going to happen uh, you know post covid so we uh, and the one thing which we are sure of that we will want to minimize any need of a customer stepping out of their you know home to come to you know uh, uh, at cash 24 outlet right so we digitize all the documents requirement what we had earlier that now we will uh, you know minimize any kind of exchange of documents what happens when you either buy or sell a car right everything will happen digitally there is no paperwork which needs to be signed or physically signed or to be exchanged here, right that's number one uh, number two would be that rather than you know entire payment system right uh, we actually did you know move completely move to online so there is not be any cash cash transaction which is going to take place another point is that how do we uh, the, the one thing which uh, you know make customer to go out of their home is to you know get their car checked right you want to do, either do a test drive or if he selling a car he would want to take the car to somewhere they can check the car at right now that also again we we provided services where cash 24 representative can either take the car at the you know buyer's home or go to you know seller so when inspect the car right so in all way uh, we have minimize the exposure to any you know of, at all level of customer and it also helps employee as well right now employees also doesn't need to go to the branch employee also doesn't need to go to the places where a lot of people around them right so it has like like those same the same strategy is what we use for the customer the same you know same thought process apply for our own employees to you know every crisis comes comes with an opportunity right and i think what if you look at the opportunities what lies ahead in front of us and if we really you know uh, you know find innovative ways to you know cash that out i think uh, those are the things which will really get you know uh, boost up the business shikant uh, buying homes is is something that you know a lot of people would like to go and see a product you know see a space you know they just want to see how it feels how do you match that experience when you are you know when you are offering the same experience to them on online so if you look at actually uh, doing up a home it's a very personal personalized experience right so for example there are two types of people who do up their homes one is if you are going to planning to live there on your own two if you are going to rent it out i mean broadly these are the two categories right i mean there is no really no third category and no no not many people will just do it up and just leave it as it is right so they either want to rent it or they will want to live there so uh, they are actually at two ends of the spectrum for us uh, if you actually take a look at it what is not common is budgets are not common if you are going to live there on your own you look at it as a you know once in a once or twice in a lifetime experience you are you are not so you know uh, tight fisted with budget but you want the best thing acha wo main gaming ka i mean i'm a gaming freak and i need my gaming you know zone or i'm a i like entertainment and i need my you know whatever uh, 55 inch or 100 inch tv which uh, which which is which is fit with all the sound uh, etc so you have your own very personal thing if you are going to be and you don't mind going a little bit but if you are renting it out it typically they say acha yaar dekh lo bhai 6 lakh se budget nahi hona chahiye thoda zyada you know bold color mat dalna just put some you know nice pastel shades and you know so that the person who's renting it uh, is not going to disagree with it very much that's really pretty much but that's what is not common what is common though is 
you still want it personalized to your floor plan you you need to see like you said rightly it's like it's a very personal experience so which is what we managed to do which is that the starting point is your floor plan so we take the soft copy of the floor plan and we give the 3d experience instantaneously based on that floor plan which is what is most interesting so a it's contextual it's for your floor plan it's for not some floor plan b it's instant so you actually are look at spacecraft kaisa hai ki it's like a 90% zoom of the plan in one hour after that that last 10% takes you like 5 hours but you get that 90% zoom in one hour so it gives you a very good idea not 100% accurate but almost there of what your home is going to look like most importantly tag to budget so we cater to the middle class uh, of india and for them because it's such a large ticket size uh, budget is very very important so uh, and the platform is needs to be transparent according to me so here for example if i am doing up my kitchen and i want you know boiling water proof uh, wood which is the most expensive and particle board which is the least expensive the minute i move move from one one to the other the price goes either up or down automatically and i am seeing it happen so it's like a taxi meter going i mean taxi meter never goes down but i'm saying you know what i mean right so uh, so it is actually sh- showing you the price moving up or down based on the changes that you are asking the designer to make and so that transparency is very very uh, 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 illuminating to the customer and they really uh, uh, seem to like it so so these are some of the aspects which are extremely important because especially because it's such a large ticket size uh, customers want to be really sure before they actually place uh, uh, place the this one so transparency is extremely important it being connected to budget is very important it being 100% contextual to your home is very important the plan being 100% contextual to your home is very important and obviously being instantaneous is also important because normally what happens up if you have ever had a chat with the interior designer you will pour your heart out and give all design you will have the talk you will get the quote one week later if you are lucky so here you are getting it synchronously as in as you are saying you are getting the so these uh, have been the most important features that customers have liked like i told you we catered to the middle class they are today paying both emi for for the home loan and they are paying rent in the house that they are staying they want to stop at least one they can't stop the emi that they want to stop the rent at least so they also want to get go move along and do the home interior so that they can move in fast and stop paying rent for the house that they are in now so it's a combination of a few things which are playing uh, 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 around like i think when kt was saying i was thinking of that lenin i don't know if you have heard that it's a very nice line by lenin it says for decades nothing happens and in weeks decades happen so you know i think we are in that phase where in weeks decades have happened and i think if we don't keep up to it then we are going to be left behind as a business my next question is to kt prasad so uh, being on the other end of the spectrum you know how do you look at the whole idea of uh, driving digital experiences everybody says that you know we are out there supporting digital journeys and stuff like that uh i'll start by saying what gartner said just a couple of weeks ago i think few weeks ago they've rated all the service providers out there and and zendesk has been ranked number 1 in digital uh, customer experience and we we are very thankful to our customers who actually embarked into this journey and and gartner is one company who's got a full credibility they talk to the customers who actually rate us right so it's it's very heartening but you i think you made a very important point and the the question about uh uh you know this digital technology is there uh, of course we we all have great technology when covid has come in and i think the the there are two fold conversation that is going across the panel now there is employees there is a there is a customer out there so we've seen and and when when this pandemic has really hit and we moved to work from home mandatory work from home at around march uh, uh beginning uh, we were probably one of those few companies who said uh before this goes little um you know too unhandleable whatever we should move back so we all went back to mandatory work from home so we took care of our employees um what what i mean by that actually so we provided not just uh you know hardware accessories like monitors and keyboards and and we kind of given incentivizing people to have build their work from home facilities kind of predicting that this is going to be there for a longer time 
And again, one fundamental philosophy why we want to take care of employees uh, first. Because if you take care of your employees, they will take care of your customers. Because there's a strong belief that happy customers, happy employees means happy customers. Across the globe, there are different technologies. And what we've seen one thing in common that that the customers feel more comfortable to talk to businesses uh, in these social messaging technologies. And, and the reason actually, this is where they talk to their family and friends, right? Um, but every country geography have different tools uh, where the end customers use it. But the intention of connecting to business is always they're using this technology. So we have, have uh, there is a technology called Sunshine Conversations. Um, this is basically irrespective of messaging technology that you want to talk about, uh, or if you want to provide, you are, a, you are a company based out of India, but actually serving a global customer base or a regional customer base. That means you've got to handle more than A technology versus B technology. So we have this beautiful sunshine conversation, which enables you to bring in own messaging technologies or bring in the ready-made um, messaging technologies and, and all sync up into one. Uh, we have seen that customers embarking into the journey. Second, uh, uh, what we have seen the instant gratification, including I'll, I'll talk about inside out first. We are seeing customers, of course, would prefer to call from the phone, but we know that you know we couldn't move every individual to work from home and still be available on a phone. See, we use voice over OIP technology, but that requires a high internet bandwidth. Does homes have high internet bandwidth to take make customer calls? Probably no. So we we we've understood all of that. And and probably our strategy of being omni-channel to our customers really helped. So we said we move our, all our workloads, our predominant workload to chat. So all of all the customers of ours can reach out to us if they have issues, they want to buy, make purchase, anything using chat technology. It's not just uh, you know um, having the support in one versus other. And we've seen a significant increase. And it's nice to do. And it's far more easier. It's scalable. Um, and I think either it's a messaging technology or you know if, if we talk about in, in the India market, we have seen people using bots as a huge technology. It's, I, I call this a bit of me too syndrome bot because my competitor has a bot or I've seen my neighbor has a bot. So I want to have a bot really, really thinking about does it really make sense for my business? Companies who are providing artificial intelligence, machine learning based technologies really did well because uh, like I would want to get a support from, from businesses. Uh, see, I'll, I'll give you a simple context. Um, I sold my car on Cars24 uh, just a few months ago, just before pandemic. Uh, my daughter is going through Vedantu as we speak because we signed up just a month and a half ago. I'm, I'm in the early days of conversation with, you know, Homeland for my re because, you know, when you sit at home, uh, when you are, you know, always a travel, I travel quite a bit, about 60%. Now I'm sitting at home. So my wife and me get along with quite a bit of conversation. We talk about, okay, what can we do? And maybe, you know, we want to work, you know, we want to have a, a permanent desk. Um, now we can't have a temporary dust and my daughters need to have, uh, those dust space. So we figured out all of that. And we said, this is the right time to do, uh, you know, re-interior conversation. The reason again, I think it gave a lot of opportunity for all of us. Uh, so I'm looking at as a, as an end customer talking to the businesses who are digitally enabled. So I'm just giving you a testimony of how we look at, uh, from a consumer. And we are seeing from our service providers, we are seeing that most companies who have this omni-channel strategy really thrived in the last three months and continues to thrive. Because remember, whatever impressions and service that you provided in the last three months, it's a lasting impression. Your customers will remember and, 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 and become loyal to you over a period of time. And hopefully they will evangelize. Because like I'm evangelizing three service providers today, and I'm sure there are customers out there evangelizing all three brands that we're talking about today including ours too in Zendesk. So if we had to ask uh, you know, each of you, I mean, keeping in mind the sectors that you are operating in, what was your CX approach and employee experience before COVID and how has it changed after the pandemic? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about the employee uh, first uh, because they are the driving force for the business. So uh, I think it, so. One of we, we measure our employee satisfaction very, very closely, right? We have got some external tools through which we measure the NPS of our own employees, right? Uh, now, this, this when the COVID crisis hit upon us, like uh, we almost the business shut down completely to zero, right? And then all, all of us, we had to figure it out how, number one, keep the employee engaged, right? Uh, and number two, how to keep their morale up because there was just too much uncertainty out there, right? We didn't know when the first lockdown would get over or if it, if it will get over. 
Like if we just move back in month of April, we were all not sure what's going to happen, right? And then lockdown one, lockdown two, lockdown three. So there's just way too much, you know, uh, fear, concern, and uncertainty was there. So, so one thing which we, you know, did, uh, where we actually really, really tried hard upon was to actively engage with each and each and every employer, right? Like maintain the communication, right? Be be very open and transparent, right? Let them know what is going on, right? Let them know what you know and what you don't know. We actively engage with like each leaders of Cars24 was, you know, talking to the employee, holding AMAs on a, you know, weekly basis um, where we had town hall almost for three times where everybody got an opportunity to, you know, interact with the founders. So that has actually helped employee morale keep up. I think over there, HR, played, HR is going to play a pivotal role. Uh, like I think uh, employee engagement is going to become a really, really big, uh, especially how, how do we do it virtually. Uh, RNR, right? Reward and recognition. How do we, you know, all, all of those activities, what we used to do back in the office. Now we just need, need to reimagine on how we are going to conduct it. Right now, jumping to the uh, customer experience, right? No, I think over there, the one part, which is about communication, uh, like we, we now need to communicate extra to the customer because the one thing which has happened even post lockdown was that there were just too many ups and downs in each city, each, you know, corner, like there, Every day you will hear some city or some part of the town is going, you know, shutting down and all. So over there, we we, we, we felt a lot of hiccups over there. So we created a communication platform where we were sending real time updates to the customers about, uh, you know, buying and selling whatever their, you know, touch point is. Right. So so that they are informed about anything which can change. Right. At any at any given point of time. So again, over there, communication was the key. We wanted to make sure we over communicate to our uh, customers as well so that they are aware of. Uh, you know what's what, what's going on like each and every customer was supposed to uh, show uh, rc we call it registration certificate and insurance of the car physically to our employees right then we we decided we don't need to do it they can now just upload the car on uh, you know send us on whatsapp or upload the car details on our website and we don't need to ask or exchange hands of those you know rc and insurance so all those things actually those little little things actually helps and let customer know that that the brand is actually taking care of their uh, you know safety and they are doing their level best to be able to you know serve their needs i'm proud to say we are all reaping the benefits of it now and um, auto industry and use car in particular is bouncing back uh, extremely quick and uh, we have already hit our uh, pre-corona numbers so i think it's a reflection of not only how market is you know jumping back but at the same time how we have been able to adapt to the new normal shrikant i would like to uh, you know uh, ask you to you share your insights on how you know you have handled the employee experience yeah. i'll talk about a mix of both uh, you know employee and customer side uh, i used uh, uh, an acronym uh, called the heart approach uh, for uh, for handling uh, stuff especially on both sides this was both on the employee side and the customer side i'll give you a couple of examples so the the first one was to humanize so in the heart the h was to humanize things i think I think that I found to be uh, extremely useful uh, in creating a very tight bond, both with the employee and with the customer. And I'll give you one example. Uh, we have a lot of carpenters who are part of our extended network. Obviously, they are the last mile who are most affected, lowest in the pyramid. Uh, and because of the pandemic, you know, uh, labor force, uh, you know, you, you, we have seen horror stories about them and stuff like that, right? So on day one itself, we decided that you know what, this is a worldwide pandemic, this is going to hit everybody hard, but we need to protect the ones who need the most protection and let us do what we can. So on the employee side, what we did was we actually rallied around and believe it or not, in the same month where we asked everyone to take a haircut and we did all take a big haircut in terms of salaries, we actually raised money by voluntary contribution from employees for a fund which we gave directly to carpenters so the 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 whole thing was to actually talk to them and rally them around the cause which they really cared about we are all from the interior decor industry we all know that the carpenters are the most affected and we all want to help here is your chance to help and we actually gave them final uh, once finally when we raised more than 25 lakh rupees i'm proud to say in just one month all voluntary contributions which we distributed to the carpenter community and that really helped. So that was the humanizing piece of it. On the customer side, 
we actually communicated exactly the same thing you know we told them you inventors are really the ones who are doing the final piece my for last mile work for you and for us and we are taking care of them and we actually put up actual stories of carpenters and their families being given you know uh, donations by the homeland family which went down very well uh, uh, with the with the with the customer community right uh, the second thing that we did in the heart the e was to educate we used to have once a quarter town hall we started having once in 3 4 weeks we started having a town hall and uh, we started asking uh, people to ask anonymous questions because obviously the people may be uh, not so open about asking questions by name this one so we asked people to go ahead and ask anonymous questions and stuff like that and we answered those questions so uh, i'll give you an actual example we had to take some hard decisions and we had to let people go we had to but because we had educated the people who were back saying you know why we are doing what we are doing uh, what what we managed to do was a they started at least they knew why we were doing what we were doing and they knew that uh, uh, and they they kind of accepted it and and moved on obviously nobody is happy to do uh, to let go of people or anybody of their colleagues but uh, the other thing that it reflected in is we if you take the pyramid and uh, the, you know the the highest paid and the lowest paid here we cut salaries for everyone starting from me you know highest to the lowest in terms of percentages so it was graded um, you won't believe it the last part of the pyramid we said we will not cut because we didn't want them to lose salaries uh, in these difficult times i have got enough and more emails from them saying you know why are you not letting me contribute towards home lens recovery i want to contribute from my uh, salary please cut my salary i mean i was uh, very pleasantly surprised to see communication like that but i think it's a it's a question of educating them as to why we are doing what we are doing as transparently as possible so that's the the third one you know is the uh, a of the heart is assurance of stability i think both from let me take the customer side now communicating to them they have given you a project which is worth 7 lakh rupees it's a lot of money for them and it's probably a big part of their saving right so it's our duty to communicate regularly to them and assure them saying you know what don't worry there is a lockdown there is a delay of one month but we are not going anywhere you will we will be back on the road on the 31st day and we will give you your project 30 days late but we will give it to you let me move quickly forward the r is for revolutionizing what we are doing i think i spoke about spacecraft i think it's a question of whether you're going to use technology to actually because consumer behavior is changing whether you like it or not uh, uh so are you going to revolutionize or are you not going to and uh, i mean finally you use all of these to tackle the t that to tackle the the new the new normal so to speak so so uh, so we use this this heart uh acronym and we used a lot of these uh to actually both uh handle things on the customer side and and on the and on the employee side i mean it's definitely a challenging time for everybody and um, the more employees feel you know comfortable i i guess it, it works for everybody moving on to pulke pulke what do you think uh, you know uh, of this uh, whole uh, situation where you know uh, uh, we are in and um, you know how uh, your company has been handling you know the experience for employees so yes uh, we also have been taking the pulse surveys of the team and you know uh, our team had to go and undergo a lot of stress when you know things shifted suddenly we really didn't know that you know how things will pan out because the exams have been shifting the exams are getting postponed the the mindsets of the people are getting changed a lot of people were suddenly dependent on vedantu for their primary learning as a primary learning source were our journeys really really fine tuned for that so all these things suddenly changed our entire counseling and the sales team had to uh, start working from home so their hardware and their internet requirements to you know uh, the software which they will use to you know uh, get the work done so everything had to undergo very very rapid change and we realized that you know our teams actually got under extreme amount of stress in the first one one and a half month which came out in our pulse surveys as well we we had to undergo a lot of internal changes 
uh, from as simple as sort of dictating to the entire team that you know there are times where there will be no meetings so we have mandated that these are certain hours of the day where you know the people can relax can spend time with their families because suddenly what has happened is uh, though you are working from home but you are somehow bound to the chair uh, or in front of the screen all the time and you are expected to be online all the time which is not fair uh, at the same time we uh, adopted slack big time it was there but suddenly the entire team our you know 1000 1500 plus people on the slack we doing a lot of activities there sharing lots of stories at vedantu we we create so many amazing stories with these young children from all parts of the country from andaman and nicobar islands to baramulla in kashmir so you know we have started sharing all these stories were you know in pockets with a teacher some student sharing with me some student sharing with someone else so we started sharing these stories with the entire team there on slack you know that that adds a lot of positivity because what you're doing in such stressful times uh when you see it you know making a difference to these young lives that keeps you positive we have also started doing town halls every 15 days so thankfully uh, in fact that was a great test for our platform as well so today our 1500 the last week our you know town hall there were 1800 people online on, on our own platform it was fun lots of because our our platform is very interactive so we could have a very interactive town hall with our entire team yeah one more thing so lot of people uh, had to on board and join the team virtually which has been very very tough and some in leadership as well and we all are used to you know seeing each other talking to each other get that vibe right uh, that cultural alignment but suddenly people are joining uh, virtually so how do we manage that how do we you know uh, on board them properly so we had to i mean we are still struggling there but we are building lots of processes and you know communication channels to make it happen from the uh, the student facing side um the the first line of attack has been that you know our system was designed with lot of human interactions and interventions pre covid world right uh, there were academic mentors who used to touch the families uh, using the data to you know intervene uh, there were counselors there were teachers doubt solvers now all these human touch points are somehow slowly trying to get replicated by machine to a large extent which has always been our strategy but we are now forced to do it very fast as well but that's a great challenge to have right from making entire learning journey super interactive and empathetic for the children with the help of data with minimal uh, touch points with humans uh, to giving much more confidence to parents with the data that your children are doing good uh, with lots of communication channels on product to tell them you know what all these exams are happening their dates are shifting or whatever and we are there to help you don't worry so those kind of communications have really helped yeah and at the same time you know we have realized that students are also struggling so uh, we had student communities uh, but a lot of telegram and whatsapp usage was also there Uh, but to make it much more fine tuned we are heavily investing on and testing experimenting with our own internal student communities which are uh, moderated with lots of you know information given to them and collaboration which is working out very well and these children feel connected in a positive way that i am not alone i am not the only one struggling and anxious there are many and there are mentors and teachers with us 24 into 7 so there's a kind of uh, thing that we are trying to do but yeah as i say uh we just uh, scratching the surface there's so much that needs to be done and things are shifting very very fast <laughs> so my next question is to kiri prasad can you tell us like how the C- as a crm provider you know how would you access the pre covid and the post covid scenario so i think I, i think it's a difficult one uh, but let me put it a perspective actually uh like i said in the beginning covid actually accelerated digital transformation journey for a lot of companies so what happens actually you, we have, we we managed to do a lot of it in a very short period of time that means you know everybody figured out okay i need to go digital imagine uh, in a brick and mortar comp- you know uh, stores right across the street they don't have uh, the presence of of digital land but they're still managing the businesses they're saying that i'll take uh, orders on the on the telephone line they're saying here is my whatsapp number you 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 go ahead and um, you know place order and i was talking to um, you know other industry leaders in the retail they said you know they're figuring out how do we how do we take the whatsapp uh, requirements coming in you know as order requirements and translate into a order in a sap or maybe any other erp system at the back end 
right? So there are, there are technologies out there. We could do some of it to using our technology. Uh, but I think uh, he, here is the essence. Pre-COVID, all this technology existed. Post-COVID also will exist. But, you know, I would only say that some of the behaviors that we've seen by exhibits today, like if, if Srikant had the technology written homeland three years ago, which is just, just now the spike is seen it, the technology being now embraced and people have started using it. Like look at technology, if you look at from, from Vedanta, it's all in there in digital technology. But if people are embracing it. Now, whatever now, again, Gajendra talked about how the technology helping. I would say only one point in the last three months, the lot of us and different forms and families and friends who have not tasted this technology have tasted it. They're embracing it. They're using it. And they would love to use it going forward. Today, all of us have a convenience of ordering our essential services or maybe the needs of vegetables or fruits or whatever that, that we need as essential services. You're sitting at home and you're ordering it and it's coming home. Now, you get used to is this, this technology for some time then you would want to have the same convenience. Now, I've also talked to some of the very premium uh, retailing segment. So these are the companies who sell probably watches, jewelry, you know, things of the nature where you would expect customers to come visit them and do it. So, they, so again, businesses have been figuring out how to provide a technology, the virtual technology. Um, you know, in fact, we have said, uh, we have have customers who have said, uh, store managers getting on a Zoom call showing the inventory available to a prospective buyer and the buyer will pick up X, Y, Z items and that gets goes to customer home at the doorstep and they make a final purchase. Now, all this is been, if you look at the similarities in the patterns, it is actually customer convenience. Uh, and, and, and that becomes very key for providing experience going forward. My summary would be, you know, this technology is out there. It has just been leveraged and uses and embraced in the last three months, you know, far higher than what it was. And it will continues to be there and it needs to continue to evolve. But the, the underlying theme is customer convenience. Um, and again, I'll, I'll give you one example and then probably I'll sum it up. Uh, you know, during this pandemic, a lot of the business said, and I want to create a mobile app for myself and I want to put it into app store or a play store. Now, remember what some of the customers have talked to us. They said, you know, there are too many apps out there. We just don't have, uh, we just don't feel convenient. And remember you're targeting segments of 55 years and 60 years or even you know, senior citizen segment, if you want to talk about even beyond, they don't want to deal with so many apps. For them, the convenience is actually WhatsApp. So the question is, uh, can your business continues to be interacting with your customers on WhatsApp? Uh, either it's order taking or, or it's conversation or taking feedback, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can sell, service all of them using these messaging technologies, embark them because that gives a greater convenience for customer. Um, and it has a better response rate and open rates uh, than any other channels right out there. So um, that's uh, my quick summary, Abhijit. So we'll talk about solutions now. So, I mean, um, Shrikant, uh, I'd like to ask you, you know, what is working for you and what did not in this digital transformation process that we are going through? So uh, lots of things, uh, you know, we've had to innovate on the fly. So for example, ours is a projects business. The largest issue that we have is uh, the ball getting dropped between, uh, you know, one of the points, so, you know, it's like point A to point uh, Z and somewhere between those points, somebody dropping the ball is uh, typically the, uh, is typically the uh, standard problem that happens for us. So. This dropping the ball can be in terms of somebody missing out on doing something, going uh, correctly from one point to the other, etc. So um, that has been uh, 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 something that has still not worked for us. Uh, doing that, uh, you know, virtually has been a little more difficult. But having that, that's when technology actually plays uh, plays its role, right? So, what Shikhan, kind of challenges did you face, uh, you know, while handling, uh, you know, the digital transformation, you know, at, at your organization during the COVID time? And how, you know, what kind of technologies did you use to, you know, to handle those, sort out those challenges? So as I had mentioned earlier, the biggest challenge for us was, you know, to, uh, to cope up with this lockdown where our teams cannot physically reach out to, you know, the families, because that was one of our conversion in the sales process with our teams, you know, distributed across the country. So it was a big challenge because, you know, the, if that wouldn't have worked, and you know, my entire team was grounded and we had to actually let go of people. It took us time. The first few days we struggled. Uh, then we, we, we were evaluating uh, 
what can work we use our own platform to convert this entire team into a, a remote uh, home demo team using our own platform so that initial one month was a struggle where you know the entire processes uh, they were not streamlined we had to give dongles to these people to their homes in their respective cities where, wherever they were that was also failing we had to in fact uh, create a new version of the product which which works at a low internet bandwidth so that first one one and a half month was a struggle for us but you know it it has it actually converted into a win with you know every counselor now touching more than two to three times the families which that counselor used to touch uh, before physically right all of our processes required as i said a lot of human touch point the parents used to touch us for us or, or connect with us to uh, get clarity on certain processes how the education will happen you know when, when will this exam going to happen so a lot of customer care uh, inbound calls used to happen uh, as well as there was a team of academic mentors which used to you know uh, go and touch the students and the families with the right kind of interventions that should be done to, uh, to them for them based on the data and their performance right so this process actually uh, is seeing a struggle as i speak because suddenly the number of students have increased but uh, that human touch point cannot scale at that rate so as we speak we are trying to use a lot of technology and data driven approaches uh, to identify what all touch points actually can happen without a human intervention kachev i would like to uh, ask you to share your insights on how you know what kind of challenges did you face during your uh, this piece, yeah. period of time yeah i think the, one of the uh, the challenges what we faced uh, post lockdown was over uh, was that a lot of our channel partners which are, which are like small you know small uh, small scale use car dealers because of sudden lockdown sudden you know everything started you know sh uh, shutting down then a lot of our channel partners had a huge uh, pile of inventory of cars with them right and uh, currently almost 50% of our cars are bought by these partners right so when as soon as we opened up we 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 uh, we realize that those partners are not ready to buy car from us right? and uh, because and why because they they don't have liquidity all the cars what they have bought uh, prior to uh, you know lockdown they are still standing there because activities were completely shut and for and about they had a huge uh, you know losses in last few months because they could not do any business so we had to uh we had to come out we had to find a way uh, to help them out immediately uh, and only way to help them out immediately was to uh, liquidate their inventory right how can we help them sell their car faster uh, and second how can we provide them more uh, working capital uh, so that they can start doing business right so i think over there we quickly uh, realized how grave the situation was uh, and we again discuss with uh, that problem statement with our product and tech team and what we the solution what we came out with was that how about we connect like like you know uh, kt press had always used to uh, use an example of whatsapp right those all uh, you know use car dealers were communicating with each other uh, like you know from from ages on the whatsapp right with each other but whatsapp communication to them is always very, very broken because they can't follow up with the leads many times the the information is not complete when you are exchanging you know random information with some set of uh, uh, you know whatsapp group or you are in so when we realize that we already have a huge amount of traction on our mobile auction platform of more than 10000 you know dealers spread across pan india how about we create a and on that platform they are already spending more than 3 hours on daily basis trying to you know you know discover the cars what they want to buy how about we create a marketplace on that auction platform Uh, where you know dealer can you know buy or sell car uh, between each other right uh, and over there they will have structured flow of all the required piece of information what you know what they need to be to be able to precisely know the value of the car at which they can transact now that has now the entire conceptualization to the problem you know defin defining the problem and also what solution we need to come up with was you know uh, done in less than less than one week and then we rolled out the product by end of uh, by end of may Uh, and now we are going to even expand more and more features on the same platform to be able to help dealer to liquidate the cars on uh, what they have in the inventory so i think one of the problem statement for us was that and uh, and we i wish we could have realized it a little bit earlier but i think we we realized it uh, soon enough when we were able to come out with that solution uh, right on time uh, and i think uh, overall i think the mvp what we launched was good enough for them to uh, you know create transactions 
and we were happy with that. My next question is to KD Prasad. So, according to you, what is the way forward in the CX realm based on the learnings from the from the pandemic? Uh, I think basically you, that's a summary of everything that everybody talked about. So, I'll put it into three different uh, uh, areas. So, uh, look at customer experience in the new world uh, or the world that we're going to be um, after COVID or or during the COVID process that we're all getting impacted. Three different silos or three different pillars, I would call customer. Um, just keep everything, whatever you do, is it convenient for customer? Is it faster for customer? Is customer has a voice to reach out to you? Look at ways to automate things to make it make the life of a customer easy. But very importantly, um, you know, when the customer comes to you uh, with, 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 with issue, show empathy, lead with empathy. I think very important uh, aspect of, of, of treating the customer with empathy with these, these days. Second, I think, uh, again, the panel talked about is uh, collaborate, you know, uh, help uh, and also encourage collaboration within the teams, you know, weekly, uh, uh, shorter town halls, all hands meetings, different ways, but, but encourage collaboration uh, and, and, and proactive engagements with your teams is super important. And one last thing that I would say uh, is another C is again, community. You know, uh, build an effective community. I think uh, uh, Pulke talked about how that community really helps there. I again, look at individual of our industries. There are great communities out there. You know, are you increasing uh, a effective conversation? There are people who got impacted. That learnings can be shared with other people, so that the other people don't need to go through the same same um, uh, problem identification. Also, resolution. You can pick it up from there and then evolve. I think if we can focus on inward, which is basically employees outward for the customer also around us, which is a community. Um, I think keeping these three pillars in the mind, I think uh, that's where we believe that CX in the new world will arrive into. Thank you. So this has been a really insightful and interactive session. I would like to thank all the guest speakers for sharing their opinion and helping us understand the changing trends in CX and digital transformation around the pandemic. Uh, some of the, uh, salient points you know from a conversation the industry has leveraged you know uh, those platforms that customers are more familiar and comfortable with using chatbots ai powered chatbots have been really effective yeah, and companies with omni channel strategies is, have have all you know have been able to pivot to this scenario you know much better and, and engaging regularly with employees is also the key because they are the one who you know who been who will be part of this journey with them session by thanking our panelists and viewers for taking part in this discussion.